Yo folks, this is Tim and today I would like to speak about my recent mock-up design tool <laughs> I've created myself with processing. Well, this is, the, this is the situation. I've been thinking a lot about how to create my mock-ups, right? I've got a very simple use case. I just want to have a black and white photography and I want to put some um, of my animations onto, you know, billboards and posters and stuff. And that's basically a very, very simple use case for creating a mock-up. I don't need any blend modes. I don't need any fancy techniques and shadows, whatever. I don't care about that. I want it simple. I want it truthful. You know, I don't want my mock-ups to lie. I want them to tell the truth. It's a mock-up. It's not real. <laughs> and that's why I just chose that approach. So the challenge is, I've decided to work with Linux and Ubuntu and that's basically something I really really love to explore. I love to explore the possibilities of open source software in terms of design. Sometimes I find very good tools that you know solve the <laughs> problems much better than proprietary and commercial tools but in this case for example I was really really struggling with finding the right approach until I ended up with an own solution. So here's what I tried. The first thing I did was researching for an alternative for After Effects for Linux. So what I found is Natron. Natron is a pretty amazing uh, editor. It's a pretty amazing compositing tool for any platform. It's open source. And you basically work with nodes, just like in Touch Designer, for example, where you just connect these nodes and, you know, chain specific elements uh, with each other to achieve appropriate effects. The problem was that, you know, transforming these layers here on my viewport was so edgy and so slow and super, super inconvenient. So I ended up, I, I just stopped. I was not able to get my head around working with that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why I just went over to Blender. So Blender is an amazing open source software and Blender is just, uh, it's just incredible. It just gives us um, comprehensive tool to create any kind of 3D, three-dimensional design projects like, you know, um, virtual worlds and, and animations, um, 3, 3D printing uh, data and stuff. So this is really, really a very, very cool um, environment. The problem was that my use case was kind of too simple for Blender, right? I just ended up um, creating a, yeah, a three-dimensional scene with where I just um, added a, um, where I just put my mock-up scene into and uh, yeah, then playing a video as a texture on a plane uh, on a uh, on a two-dimensional shape in Blender was hell. And the problem was, even if I was able to master it and make it possible to place a vertex shape and put a texture on it, um, in the end the colors didn't match because I had kind of a strange lighting in Blender. That was crap. <laughs> so what I did then is building an own tool with processing. And that was really cool because this is just one application that I create for my very, very specific use case. And I'm now able to use that one for all of my mock-up um, uh, needs when I need to create mock-ups. So um, I just use Processing 4 for that. By the way, I've got Processing 3 also installed, but I use Processing 4. And uh, I just installed it on my Linux computer. And the process of creating this software was kind of edgy, to be honest. Um, it took me several hours to get get it up and running, but here is what I came up with in the end. So this is my mock-up creation tool. It has kind of, you know, it's not really well coded, it's kind of messy, and but I think, you know, for this very simple use case, it's just enough. Um, let me just run the code and show you what, how it works. So we've got this surface and it basically displays a, um, an image that I found on Unsplash, which is just a blank billboard. And I'm now able to scale that image and even skew it any way I want. I can position it here with this controller and just can skew, skew it in any way I want. And so I think something like this would be nice. Let's just reset the skewing here a bit to make it more. Okay, what's wrong here? Now it's, ah, okay, this is the opposite direction. Um, now let's put that image into the middle of that window here. Yeah, perfect. And then if I had hit one, it just selects the first vertex point of that 
the shape. If I hit two, it selects the second one and I just can move it into the appropriate position. Three selects the third one and four selects the fourth one. Surprise, right? And now I can just hit R and then the rendering process starts. That means I hit R and it just renders that, um, yeah, that video and it zooms into the scene, right? So um, yeah, I get some weird errors here, but they don't really influ have any influence onto the project itself. So it just worked out very well. Uh, for this purpose, I just created a um, record script that just records the whole process of designing the mockup. And now I've got this video here where it just shows uh, how this works. It's kind of accelerated because the frame rate is a different one now than I had while working on the mockup. And um, yeah, this is basically what I did. So I want to wrap this up quickly by saying that I believe that um, processing and creative coding applications are definitely great options sometimes for solving simple tasks. And even though some people think um, that they don't, um, that are, they are not really appropriate because they are quite limited compared with, let's say, production and um, enterprise solutions like Adobe After Effects or Apple Motion. I think the restrictions that come from working with creative coding can also be drivers of the whole identity or of the whole um, visual. So I think it's very interesting to think about how can I use these, these restrictions to create something that even though works well, right? And that's the challenge I always face when I will write my own tools. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you. And um, that's it for now. Peace. <laughs>